This is the first of the three Microsoft Access tutorials. Managing and manipulating large amount of data dynamically can be done with the aid of relational databases. Microsoft Access has just the features which facilitate this characteristic. Information can be stored, linked, and managed effectively and efficiently using Access. In these series of tutorials, you will learn how to set referential integrity, manipulate and build queries, tables and charts, import and export data from or to other applications. You will also learn how to format data, send emails using macros, and use conditional statements to evaluate and analyze. But before we jump into that, we're going to look at database concepts. In order to understand and efficiently use Access, you need to understand basic concepts of a database. A database is an organized collection of information. For instance, telephone book, collection of possessions, customer, database, employees, and orders database. Access has numerous tools which can help analyze this kind of data. Sorting, extraction of what you want to see using forms and queries, and summarizing the data using reports are some things which can be accomplished using Access. Let's begin with understanding database terminology. Table is a collection of information organized into the following fields, records, and data values. Fields are essentially columns in the table. For example, a particular table can have name, address, phone number, order status. Records. These are essentially the rows in the table. For example, Surabi's information or Pat's information or John's information would be stored in a row. Data values. This is actual information in the table. For example, the address of someone, their phone number, their email is considered to be actual data values. Many at times users try to store this information in an Excel file. However, it is not efficient as it is a flat file to a great extent, which means it is just a list of information. If a certain record is deleted from table, user will need to manually delete it from other tables as well. On the other hand, since relationship between tables is defined by the user in Access, any kind of modification or deletion is cascaded across related tables. Access is a relational database which prevents duplication of information and it is less prone to error and it is a lot more flexible. Access therefore uses primary keys and foreign keys to connect tables and entries. Primary keys are unique identifiers which distinguishes each entry in a table. Each row needs to have a unique identifier to distinguish itself from other records in a table. This is done with the help of numbering system, or auto numbers. These primary keys become foreign keys, also known as common fields among tables, or rather linking two or more tables, which means it is a field which both tables have in common. This brings us to the topic of relationships. There are three kinds of relationships, one-to-many, many-to-many, and one-to-one. -one. This is said to be the cardinality of a given table in relation to another. Let's take each of these cardinalities one by one. One-to-many. This is the most common type of relationship. This is the relationship between the department table and the doctor table. Each doctor works for one department, but one department could have many doctors. This is the most common terminology used to display the relationship between primary and foreign key. Many to many. This is the relationship between the records in the doctor table and records in the patient table. 
Doctors have many patients and a patient could have several doctors. One to one. One to one relationship is mostly used to split a table in two in order to optimize access or limit the visibility of some information. In the hospital example, such a relationship could be used to keep apart doctor's personal or administrative information. Every field needs a data type so that Access knows how to manage it. Here are some of the most used and common data types. Auto number. Auto number basically sequentially increments each record. It is commonly used as a primary key. Text. Text is for alphanumeric characters. Number. This is for numeric data. Currency. This is for financial information. Date and time. This is used for dates and times in a table. Yes, no fields. These are essentially either or scenarios. Attachments. Attachments allow you to associate files from other programs such as Word or Excel or PowerPoint or any other program. Hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are for emails and websites. Memos. They are for long commentary or description of the field. Calculations. They do math based on data in other fields. Lookups. Lookups get the data from other tables. There are four types of objects in Access. Tables, forms, queries, reports. Table, as I have said, is a collection of rows and columns. Forms, Forms are for data entry by the user. Queries. Queries are for analyzing data. Reports. They are there to print it all out in an organized fashion which would be understandable to the user. Macros are not necessarily objects, but they allow user to automate tasks and add functionality to the forms, reports, and controls. Now let's create a database. Open the Access and go to the File menu. You can either open an existing file and use that, or you can create a new file from scratch. So I'm going to create a new file. Under the File tab, there's something called New. Click on that. These options would be available to you. If you click on Blank Database, you can create a database from scratch. If you want to integrate Access with SharePoint, you need to click Blank Web Database. Next option is Recent Templates. If you have used any templates recently, then it will give you those templates. If you would like to explore more templates in Access, then you can go ahead and click on Sample Templates. And it will open various templates that are available in Access. You can click on the Back button to go back to the main menu. At the bottom, we have office.com templates. These are the templates which are available online. So if you want to use any of these, they would be available to you. We're going to go ahead and click on blank database. And on the right hand side, there's something called file name and create. We're going to change the name of this new file. Let's call it testing one. If you would like to change the location of this file, you can go ahead and click on this folder icon and save it wherever you would like it to. Do click OK. Once I do that, now I'm going to click Create. So Access has automatically opened the table for me. In case this was not done, let's just say it was closed. Let me just close the table. Then I'm going to go to the Create tab, and under Tables, there's something called Table Design. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Once I do that, another window would open, and this is where I can go ahead and specify the column names, the type of column, or the data type, the description, so on and so forth. So let's just say our first column would contain product name. So I'm going to type in product name. It is going to consist of text data, so I'm just going to let it be. But you can choose from various options that are there. And in here, you can type in the description of this column. 
it may not be necessary for you to do that because this is not going to be visible anywhere in the table. However, if you would like others to use this table to do various things, it might be a good idea to put in the description of the field. Next could be product type. Again, that is a text. Then I'm going to put in product price. This is not a text, this is a number. I'm going to select number from the drop down. Now, let's just say I close this. It's giving me an error message, which is essentially telling me I need to have a primary key before saving the table. It's asking me, so do I want to create a primary key now? I'm going to click yes. It has already done that for me. So if I go back to table design, notice that it has already created a primary key for me. Had it not done so, let's just say I want to delete this row. If it had not done so, user can do it by himself or herself. You simply need to type in, let's say, you want the primary key to be the product ID. So I'm going to type in product ID. And in data type, I'm going to select auto number in this case, because that's usually a primary key. And now I'm going to save this table. And I'm going to click close. And when I open the table from the left-hand side menu, it is going to have all the fields which I just created. So let me just go ahead and expand this. And you can go ahead and start inputting the names of the product type, product price, product ID. It will automatically do the product ID part for you. So this is how you create a table in Access. Hope this was useful. This video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomath.com. Thank you.